Today we're going to be talking about how to make really thin films, aka 2D nanostructure synthesis. I have lots of examples of these, so if you missed this day in class, you should definitely come and ask me um, to check these out because there's some pretty cool uh, properties with these 2D films. Some examples of thin films would be a hydrophobic coating on a windshield, a plating on a car bumper, an anti-reflective coating, a lot of people have those on their glasses, solar cells, soap bubbles are thin films, especially when you see all those beautiful colors in them, and a gasoline puddle also has that thin film. You need to know a little bit about vacuums in order to understand how these are made. So in order to understand a vacuum, you need to know what the term pressure means. A review from chemistry might help that pressure is really just gas particles that are colliding and exerting a force when they collide. And a vacuum is the opposite of something having pressure. It's the absence of pressure or there's very, very little pressure. Atmospheric pressure is measured at about 760 torr also known as 1 ATM, 101.3 kPa's, 760 millimeters mercury. There are lots of different units for pressure. For film deposition, you want a pressure of 10 to the negative 3 torr. So that is way, 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 way smaller than atmospheric pressure. At this pressure, particles don't collide into each other or very often. They mostly collide with the surfaces and Again, you don't want things to collide with your very thin layer because that can cause contaminations to happen. A rough vacuum would be something that's between 1 to 10 to the minus 3rd tor. A medium is 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 6. This is where sputter coating and chemical vapor deposition have to take place. A high vacuum would be 10 to the negative 6 to 10 to the negative 9. Electron microscopes use this uh, vacuum pressure. And ultra-high vacuum, sometimes known as UHV, is less than 10 to the minus 9th tor. So that's for some surface analytical, uh, very specific instruments that require that sensitive of a vacuum. Some other terms that are really helpful when we're talking about making these thin films are source, species, and substrate. So source is basically like where you're trying to get your thin layer from. It's literally the source. So example, if you're trying to put a thin layer of gold on something, your source would be a big block of gold. Species is the chemical that you're actually trying to grow. Okay, so maybe you're trying to grow some titanium oxide nanotubes. Okay, or a thin layer, I should say in this case. And substrate is the surface that you're trying to grow it on. Silicon would be an example of a substrate. So one of the ways that you can make this thin film is by using a technique called physical vapor deposition or PVD for short. And it involves transferring that species from a source to a substrate. For example, if you have gold and you heat up that gold so it vaporizes, you can cause it to deposit as a thin layer of gold atoms, maybe between 0.1 nanometers to millimeters thick. There are two main types of PVD. There's evaporation, which involves heat, like I was just talking about, and then sputtering, which is uh, something different that we're going to talk about. So evaporation, this is what the instrument looks like. Uh, first, let's do the fun facts. It's about $60,000 for one of these. Intel, for example, has many of these instruments. They're trying to make uh, computer chips. They're putting different thin layers on their chips. So here we've got our source, which is right down here where my arrow is. And we're trying to deposit a material onto the substrate, which is up here. So again, it's under vacuum, and you can control the concentration of your growth species. Uh, basically, that'll determine um, how thin of a layer you've got uh, based on how much of your source material you have. Okay, so you heat it up, and it's kind of just like a beaker with uh, boiling water in it. If you put a glass watch glass above it, um, you can imagine that some of those water molecules would form a vapor on that piece of glass above it. That's basically what's going on here, only with different types of 
uh, chemicals, different types of sources. And so this is the demo I was just talking about. So in class I showed how that can happen with the boiling water in the beaker. Sputtering is a little bit different. Sputtering is uh, kind of like bowling because what you do is you shoot argon atoms at a target. For example, gold. And you can see this would be the big piece of gold up here where it says target. Okay, so the plasma atoms, they show as positive and negative charges here. They accelerate it toward this target and they knock individual gold atoms down. So those atoms are literally like bowling balls that argon atoms are and they're hitting the pins, which are the gold atoms, and the, the pins are falling down onto your substrate. So you can imagine that that would cause that thin layer to start to appear there and grow. So in class, I challenged everyone to make a model of this um, using only nerds and I usually give out something like Skittles or Gobstoppers and they have to pretend like they want to coat something um, like a pencil and you want the nerds, for example, um, you could put some double-sided tape on a piece of cardboard and kind of hang that upside down with the nerds hanging face down above the pencil and then throw Skittles up at the nerds and the nerds are uh, basically caused to shake loose and fall down on the pencil. There's also chemical vapor deposition, which is similar to physical vapor deposition, but it's really a reaction that's between two gases. So when the gas molecules collide, they form the thin layer at the base, and so basically they are mixing those two gases together. Self-assembly is another way that you can make a thin layer. Um, knowing that certain atoms love to bond with other atoms, you can take advantage of that and cause things to self-assemble because of these forces. So for example, sulfur loves copper, silver, and gold. So imagine this blue bar right here is a piece of copper metal. And these big blue atoms are sulfurs. What you could do is you could have a sulfur molecule that's got something attached to the end, maybe a hydrophilic end, for example, and you can mix the copper metal with the sulfur molecules and you'll have this thin layer because the sulfur molecules will stand up like hairs, the tails will stand up like hairs on top of the surface and there you have a thin layer. There's some other ways to make these thin films too. There's something called dip coating. If you've ever made homemade candles, um, it's very similar to that. And when you're making homemade candles, you basically take a string and you dip it into hot wax, let it cool, you dip it in again and again and again, and eventually you've got a candle. Um, with this, you could basically create as thin or thick of a layer uh, based on how many times you actually dip your substance into whatever you're trying to coat it with. There's also spin coating, which I always compare to like a Gravitron ride at a carnival or something like that, um, but basically what you can do is you can spin something, kind of like that toy where you can drop the little drops of paint and the paint will splatter and create this thin layer as it spins. Um, you can do that with chemicals too. As you can imagine, that might not be the most precise thin layer, but it works. It's kind of a rough way to do that. So here I talk about how the resulting films films can be porous and amorphous. That means without shape. Okay, these can have unique properties though, like low thermal conductivity. They conduct electricity, in other words, at low temperatures. And they have other applications, like electrodes in solar cells. And that is it for the 2D synthesis notes. Let me know in class if you